fam welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are having an amazing day for today's video as you guys can see by the title down there today we are going to be talking about a very young couple that unfortunately got murder and torture right around valentine's day and their names were jesse McVeigh and patricia mann before we get started please don't forget to subscribe and the little button down there if you want to know more about their story then just keep on watching we are going to be talking about Jesse McBain and Patricia Mann. They're a young couple that got abducted, tortured, and murdered around Valentine's Day. Jesse was 19 years old and he was a very popular kid in school. He was athletic and he actually attended the North Carolina University. His high school sweetheart was Patricia Mann and she was 20 years old and she was actually studying to become a nurse. Jesse shared a car with his brother and it was his brother's turn to use it but Jesse actually made a deal with him and the brother let him borrow the car for that night. Jesse wanted to have the car because he wanted to take Patricia to a Valentine's Day dance in the Watts Hospital in Durham, North Carolina. The couple took Jesse's car and drove down to a little place called, present day called Crossdale. Um, obviously no houses, no houses were built yet. This was a unofficial lover's lane where nursing students would actually go so they could have a little bit more of private time with their partners. Unfortunately, 1 a.m. came and went and Patricia and Jesse never came back. On Saturday morning, Patricia's roommates were very concerned because Patricia was not in her dorm. She never would break curfew. She was described as a very responsible girl and she would always follow the rules. So her not showing up with the curfew was a huge red flag for them. She, obviously her roommates were concerned because she would always take her nursing school very seriously. And for her to not show up after her curfew, they knew that something was wrong. Patricia's roommates started looking for Patricia and for Jesse calling hospitals. Um, they thought, you know, if there was a car accident that they were able to find them there. And they decided to file a report with the uh, Darnham, Darnham County Police Department. At this point, them not being able to find Patricia and Jesse, they decided to go out and physically look for them. They actually went to all their favorite places, places that obviously they knew that Jesse and Patricia would go often, including the Lover's Lane. And unfortunately, at the Lover's Lane is where they would find Jesse's car. Their coats were actually in the back, but the actual car was locked. So nothing was in disarray. There was no signs of a struggle. And obviously they were a bit more confused as to what had actually happened to them. Now with both families of Jesse and Patricia knowing that their children were missing, the police finally acted on that morning's missing police report. Investigators first started with the idea that they had actually eloped and skipped town but within a day or two it was very apparent something with this case was just not sitting right and what started as a missing what started as a missing persons report quickly turned into something much more horrible at this point, no one actually had an idea that this would like become a homicide. Carolyn Spivey was Patricia's cousin. They grew up next door to each other and were close friends. Her cousin actually said, I just got the sickest feeling in my stomach that something was very, very wrong. For nearly two weeks, police and other volunteers searched the area to try and find Patricia and Jesse. 
Investigators actually followed every lead that they would get, but unfortunately every lead would come back empty. On February 25th, 1971, 12 days after the couple had gone missing, a surveyor working on a heavily wooded area along a one-lane dirt road saw what he thought were pieces of a mannequin. He saw a leg sticking up from a pile of leaves and when he approached it and got closer he realized that it was a human body police obviously were immediately called the work scene was worked they took everything that they could from the place where the bodies were found and by the end of the day the bodies were identified as patricia mann and jesse McBain. the couple was tied up to a tree with their backs to the bark of the tree. Their hands were tied backwards with thick rope and there was also a rope around their necks. And though they were secured to the tree, their bodies had slumped down and to the side. Jesse was still wearing his class ring as well as a watch, so Robbery was completely out of the question. They knew that this wasn't about the belongings that they had. The medical examiner actually found no evidence of sexual assault. And Patricia, but Patricia did have internal injuries from being punched, kicked, and even stomped. The examiner also found several strangulation marks on their necks, suggesting that the rope was actually tightened and loosened over and over again. Investigators determined that the death of the young couple was just straight up torture. The area where Jesse's and Patricia's body was found was in other lover's lane, but this, this one was deeper into the forest. This was about a quarter mile into the woods and it was very, very secluded. The ground was littered with cigarette butts and beer bottles. People would go there to drink and just screw around. It was also located right on the county line between Orange County and Durham County. An extensive investigation began between different agencies, including the Orange County Sheriff's Department, as well as the Durham Police Department and the FBI. Dave Horn actually described a lack of cooperation between all different um, agencies. Team Horn actually said everybody individually worked on the case, but it didn't catch a whole lot of traction and there was a lot of work to be done, but it was just individual. Not a lot of the information was being shared by the multiple agencies. Throughout the case, uh, a couple of suspects did surface. Some of them were clear by polygraph test and others failed. And one in particular was a doctor that actually worked at the hospital with Patricia and he repeatedly refused to cooperate in the investigation. He was the main focus primarily in the investigation in 1971, and Horn actually still to this day, he says that he is the one that he was actually involved in this, but no one ever really zoned in in any of the suspects. Unfortunately, the case did go cold, and up to this day, it's actually still a cold case, and who actually killed them? The detective team Horn with his partner, Detective Don Hunter actually began to work on the case again. They went through all the past evidence and they rechecked all the suspects, looked for new ones. Original investigators who were still alive actually, actually got a call from Hunter and from Horn asking them to come down to the sheriff's office to go over all the details that they had put together. Horn said that he actually put a whole presentation together with all the evidence that, that he had and that there was just silence in the room. Because there were so many different agencies working on this case um, at the beginning, uh, a lot of the information was not shared. So most of the information Horn was presenting to these investigators was actually either new or just things that they hadn't heard from the investigation back in 1971. And Horn really believes that if all the agencies had come together to share all the information they had, that they would have been able to solve the case by now. One suspect was still alive. 
and it was actually the doctor from Wyatt's hospital that Patricia used to work with. Horn would actually not share why the doctor is a prime suspect in the investigation, but he did share that um, when back then in 1971, when the police actually asked him to do a polygraph test, he actually refused and he lawyered up. Now, almost 50 years later, actually Horn contacted the doctor and asked if he could provide uh, DNA and he refused once again. Though it has been decades, Horn actually believes that he can close this case and the answer in this can be DNA. There's something called the MVAC and it is a wet vacuum DNA collection system that can extract DNA from difficult places such as the rope that they had around their necks, both of the victims. He really believes that extracting DNA from this can give him the answer as to who did this to them. Unfortunately, there's only 80 MVAC in the whole entire world and 40 of them are in the USA. There is one in Guilford County, North Carolina and he, in he intends to use it in order to extract DNA from the rope. He says what a horrible tragedy, especially for young kids just starting out their life. To be kidnapped and abducted from a lover's lane, transported to a second lover's lane and then marched up a small embarkment bound and tied to a tree and strangled. We believe and we've done a lot of consults, consultants look at this and everybody's in agreement. Somewhere on that rope you're going to have a suspect's profile and this new technique will be the best one to obtain and with this new technique will be the best one to obtain that DNA. So we are very hopeful. Unfortunately the murders of Jesse McBain and Patricia Mann remain open and it is currently an active investigation. I am really just hoping that he is able to just crack and see who committed these horrible murders just so that the you know families and just just and Patricia get the justice that they deserve. It is such a horrible you know story. They were just enjoying themselves and just right around Valentine's Day. It was just so sad. So please stay safe <laughs> um, if you are gonna you know go out there uh, but yeah that is it for today's video i really hope you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe in the middle button down there as always the products that i use in today's video are going to be linked down in the description box as well as all of my social media and until then i'll see you guys on the next one bye